This is the Guide of George Outdoors. I'm right now in the middle of a center pivot irrigation in the middle of a watermelon field. And I'm gonna try to shoot some deer this afternoon on the uh, crop damage permit. Um, just to be clear about this, this is something that needs to be done. That land right there is my farm. And so if anybody's gonna be particular about killing deer here, it's gonna be me. I'm a deer hunter by trade, but I see the damage that these deer are doing to these watermelons. You can see where the deer's been chewing right there. More than likely stomped on that one. I understand that this may not be a, uh, a real popular thing, but it needs to be done. Um, if you haven't already done so, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? We do fishing, we do this type of deer management. We also do a lot of deer hunting and a whole variety of things. And we got some big plans coming up this year, um, some big things to announce, and uh, we're gonna be giving back to some, some special kids this year. So uh, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's an absolutely beautiful sunset, but if a deer's gonna move, it better happen soon if we're gonna make it happen. I got a deer that just stepped out, but it is getting very dark and my camera can't really pick up. Got her. She ran out the field, so I'm not really sure what that, what the hit was or miss. But uh, we're gonna go over there and check. It's getting dark. I'm gonna get a light. All right. I didn't uh, didn't see her drop because it was getting dark. But I walked right over where she was at, and sure enough, there she is. She was sitting out here, chowing down on these uh, watermelon. Good sized doe. I bet you I didn't have a 50 yard shot. You can't beat that. As I shot, the farmer called me and said, man, you shooting deer out here? Cause he was on the other side of the field and he was, uh, he heard me shoot. So he was thankful that I got a deer out of here. So uh, we're going to uh, get her loaded up in the back of the uh, Ranger and get out of here. Look right there. Tell me there ain't a, that's right here by my tripod. Tell me there ain't a deer problem. Look at all this deer crap. Oh my goodness, it's everywhere. And they have literally just smashed like right there. That's a prime example. They just smash them, eat a little bit and move on. All right, we're back at the skin rack. I'm guessing it's been about 15 minutes since she's been dead. A lot of people ask me, is the deer meat good this time of the year? People tell me it's not, and that's not true. It's very good but a couple things you're gonna deal with are ticks, there's more of them, so you gotta be careful for ticks. And second, you're racing against the clock. You need to get this deer, you need to get her guts out of her, you need to get her cooling off as quick as possible. Right now, it's been about, uh, I'm guessing, maybe 20 minutes since we shot her, so uh, we're quickly, we're gonna get her uh, cleaned out. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna keep the camera rolling, but some of this is gonna have to be edited out because uh, YouTube doesn't like a lot of blood. size ham on her right there. Plenty of burgers gonna come out of that. It's been a little over 30 minutes from the time we killed this deer and we already got it clean and in the cooler and we're about to cover it with some ice. Normally we put it in the walk-in cooler but right now the walk-in cooler is out of commission so we're gonna, fortunately we got an ice maker we're gonna keep this baby ice down for a few days. I couldn't show this in the video but I got something a little special for us. I got us a heart. We're gonna do a little catch, clean, cook with this guy. I'm gonna go uh, 
We're gonna let it ice down for a few days and I'm gonna find a recipe and we're gonna cook this guy up. It's starting to get hot now. All right, it's been two days since we killed that deer. Had the meat sitting in ice and water. We've kind of drained the blood off. Um, I've been doing a little research and today we're going to make street tacos with the deer heart, so deer heart street tacos. I haven't told my wife about this, so we're going to uh, trick her into eating one. I don't think she would uh, freely eat it, but I'm gonna tell her it's uh, some backstrap and she likes that. So we're going to, uh, first thing we're gonna do is take this heart and we're gonna clean it really well. We're gonna remove the connective tissue. We're gonna remove the arteries. Anything in there that's not gonna be like desirable, we're gonna get it out of there. I have never cooked, prepared, cleaned a heart before, so we're just gonna get into this. Um, we're gonna start with move, removing some of this. Uh, I'm just gonna cut it in half. And I'm gonna go through there and remove things like these arteries, any type of connective tissue that would not be good. But I can tell you this is a muscle and it's not got a lot of fat through there. And you can tell that's a, uh, it's like a cut of steak. And there's no fat in there. So it tells you this muscle does a lot of work, but uh, let's get to cleaning. All right, at this point, we're just going to uh, cut strips. Actually, it looks like a pretty decent cut of steak, so we'll see. All right, after a couple of minutes of trimming, this is the good stuff. I've tried to remove every little bit of uh, connective tissue, anything that was undesirable. These are my scraps. Maybe I'm being a little too precautious here, trying to get rid of too much, but you know, my first time trying hard, I wanna make sure I don't have anything that is, uh, is uh, unpleasant. So we're gonna season this up with some uh, taco seasoning. I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel here and uh, we're gonna let it sit for a little while. Then we're gonna get it on the, uh, on the griddle, the Blackstone, and we're gonna make up some street tacos. All right, if you don't have a Blackstone, you need to get one. These things are awesome. We got it lit up. It's heating up pretty good right now. Um, we got our heart that's cut up, been seasoned, I'm guessing maybe about a half a pound. I've also got a pound of steak pastor and pork pastor as well. I guess you would call it al pastor, I'm not really sure, but that's good stuff. I've got it already seasoned, so we're gonna have a couple of options here. We're gonna get them on the flat top. All right, I put my brother in charge. He is the uh, he oh. is the taco guru. Bringing in the big guns. Yeah, had to bring in the big guns. But right here we got steak pastor, pork pastor, and we have our deer over there, which my wife does not know what that is yet. A friend of mine who is Hispanic says you cook with the juice and leave the lime peels and all in there. In fact, when he seasons meat overnight. He leaves it all sitting there. Probably should have washed my hands. Nah. All right, we're making our taco. I got some of this, uh, they call it crema fresca, or it's kind of like sour cream. We're gonna put that some, some of that in there. Add a little bit of cilantro. We're gonna add some fresh avocado, avocado, whatever you wanna call it. Like All right, time for the official Guide to George Outdoors taste test. Okay. Hey. And this is deer. And if you say it tastes like chicken, you can go ahead and leave. Uh, it don't look like it's going to taste like chicken. A little uh, interesting, actually. I don't know if I've seen this deer. Hmm. How is it? Good in there. Chewy. A little bloody taste him. Okay. Little uh livery taste him. Okay. What is it? What'd you give me? What do you what do you think it I was? haven't seen that deer meat before. You don't know what that is? That don't look like mm. I like it. You like it? Yeah. You know what you just ate? No. Country girl. You just ate deer heart tacos, street it's tacos. Good. Okay. It was deer heart, babe. What do you think? I was wondering because I saw your picture that you put on Instagram. 
So I thought it was a little something different. I do not like it. <laughs> it, it was chewy, not a lot of taste, but bloody if that makes sense. Um, I can taste the. What'd you think? It was good. You can definitely taste the. It's like irony mm -hmm. taste. Mineral, yeah, mm -hmm. like a mineral. Would you eat it again? No. Give us all yes. All right, it's time for the official Guide to Georgia Outdoors taste test. It looks pretty good, and I can go ahead and tell you the steak and the Al Pastor pork, very good. So here we go. Not bad. Um, definitely a little bit chewier, and it's got a, uh, it's got the undertones of chicken liver or pork liver if you ever had that. So it's definitely a little more minerally. But eating it like this is not bad. I think eating it straight up like a steak wouldn't be real good. But that's really, I don't know. I'd give it like a five out of ten. So try it. You may want to cook it a little differently, and I'll leave a comment below your best part recipe. But before I end this video. In October, I'm gonna be hosting an event with the Outdoor Dream Foundation, where a lot of kids that have been facing um, physical challenges, disabilities, are gonna get the chance to come out here to my farm and hunt for a weekend. We're gonna go deer hunting, we're gonna have a full weekend, we're gonna hook them up with gifts, and just let them forget about the problems they're going through. But that event's gonna require a lot of effort, a lot of my buddies are involved, and it's gonna take some money. So if you'd like to be a part of that, you can uh, give some money to the, uh, you can PayPal, you can whatever, you can get in touch with me, email me, whatever, and you can help be a part of that. It's gonna be a great weekend. I'm really using my farm this year to help to give back to the kids. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Until the next video, this has been the unofficial and no doubt incomplete guide to George Outdoors.